Praise the Lord. We give honor to the true and living God on this great day of worship, Wednesday. Amen. I want to say good evening to the saints of the Most High God. Truly the Lord is in a blessing business. He's seated on the throne, and we give his name, honor, praise, and glory. And, and once again, it's good to be back. It's good to be back in the saddle, back into a Wednesday night Bible study, back into investigating um, what thus say the Lord. Amen. For all believers, we love the word of God. We love studying God's word and being obedient to God's word. Amen. So I'd like to greet you this evening in the name uh, that saves and the name that delivers, and that name is Jesus the risen Savior, the Christ. Amen. We've embarked on a great Bible study. If you was with us last week, we began a great Bible study, a great opening, an investigative verse-to-verse -verse study of the book of Jude, one of the books that many Christians don't even take time to study or even look at. Amen. And we embarked on this great study, and we uh, looked at Jude, the half-brother of Jesus, as he writes this a short letter, he writes a short letter to a specific people um, in this last general epistle that we've identified. And he writes this uh, letter um, rooted to the sanctified, to, uh, to those who are the preserved. I'm using some key words here that you need to grab onto, um, to the called. And he gives us a message of encouragement in his epistle. Uh, with all the apostasy that's uh, and false teaching and wickedness that surrounds us every day, a lot of stuff that we see is a lot of wickedness and apostasy and false teaching that surrounds us all the time. Uh, he gives us words of encouragement in the book of Jude, the key verse, the key verse or the key theme, I should say. He tells us to earnestly, I like the King James in this, he says earnestly contend for the faith. What he's simply saying to you and I, the believer, is don't throw in the towel. Keep believing on what God says, no matter what anybody else says. Stay in the truth concerning Christ and this life of redemption. Keep believing God no matter what. Amen. That's a great word that you and I need as believers as we wait for the soon return of our Savior. Amen. And so we want to get back into the study, and we want to hear what God is saying. Let's open up a short word. Father, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. We thank you for uh, just being our God and for being our king and for considering us and thinking about us and making a way for us. We thank you for Jesus and we thank you for the blood that has cleansed us without the remission of, uh, without, the, without the shedding of blood, there's no uh, remission of no forgiveness of sin. Amen. And so, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the fact that you have forgiven us by way of the blood of Jesus Christ, cleanses from all unrighteousness. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. Blessed this teaching today. Uh, slow us up and allow us to hear what thus say the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, I want you to pull out your study notes. We send them to you on Wednesday mornings. Go to your, go to your email. You'll see study notes for those who are in the study with us. Pull up your study notes. And for those who who you didn't pull them up, they always will be in the description box at the bottom of the page on this lesson. If you look on the bottom of the page, you can pull it out of the description box below the video. Amen. I want you to have your notes. We're in a Bible. It's just like being in Bible college. Amen. We want to grow up. We want to hear what does say the Lord. And a lot of times you learn as you write. Quick review. Let's get into it. Amen. Praise God. Quick review. Amen. Last class, we identified who Jude was. And we identified him with some other men um, whose name Jude in the Greek translation is the name Judas. If he was with us last week, the name Jude is the Greek name Judas. Amen. The Hebrew word um, Judah. Amen. And so as we look at this, we identify who this writer was. Amen. And as we look at it, we, we, we brought out of the text um, who he was, and we know that he is the brother of Jesus. Amen. He's the brother of Jesus. Amen. Uh, the half-brother of Jesus, I should say, because Jesus is virgin-born. We know that. And so we understand that. And then we brought out the text, what a true minister, what a true, the true picture of a minister looks like. Amen? If he was with us last week, because so much going on, people listen to so many people, following so many people, there should be some characteristics of a true minister. Should be some characteristics, amen? And, and we looked at uh, what a true minister looks like and the introduction of Jude. Jude says, if you go back to Jude in verse number one, Jude says, Jude, and this is key, we'll go by words, we'll just go by uh, scripture so fast, says Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ. That's major, that's mega. 
and a brother of James. Look what Jude says. He doesn't say I'm the, uh, the brother of Jesus, amen. Jesus was in my house. He says, I'm a servant, amen. And so as we looked at uh, the true um, uh, minister, what a true minister looked like, we see he is or she is, amen, a person who serves. They're a slave, amen. One who serves, one who loves the Lord, one who loves Jesus, amen. One who is humble. We talk about it. Uh, those who are ministers, true ministers, they're humble. They're not doormats, but they're humble before the Lord that God will even choose to use them. That God will even choose to use them. And watch this. And they're all so thankful. They're thankful to be used by God. For this little short period of time on this earth, they're being used by the Most High God, the creator of heaven and earth. Amen. And, and, and so as we look at this, we looked at some of the things of, of a true minister in this, uh, a man or woman of God who ministers to people possess qualities amen this is no and if or buts about it amen no and if or but amen they're going to possess quality of being a servant of being a slave this don't let's make sure we don't miss that amen they ain't trying to promote themselves they're promoting jesus amen so we talked about that last week this week let's get into the second half of verse one you say well, you we're going to take our time we're going to slow walk because i want you to see this we got a lot to talk about the second half of Jude, amen, and we're going to look at Jude 1, verses 1 and 2, only 25 verses in the book of Jude, short epistle, amen, it's in a, a short letter, amen, and look what it says, let's go back and let's read it, it says this, it says, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, and here we go, this is what we're going to be looking at today, to those who have been called, who are loved in God, the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ, mercy and peace and love be yours in abundance. Now, I don't want you to think that James got sidetracked of what he sees all around him. The church is being hit with, a, with apostasy, so much falsehood around, Gnosticism, so much is going on. I don't want you to think that he got sidetracked of what he was going to talk about, but he wants to first reveal what a true believer looks like, the picture of a true believer. Amen. He wants us to see it because in the picture of a true believer, watch this rooted Bible, those who are online, this is where your security is. When all the world is falling by the wayside, when folks who are no longer don't want to no longer love the Lord or serve the Lord or when the world is in chaos, you and I need to be anchored and secured in who we are, that we are the believers in Christ. Amen. And so as we look at this, he shows forth this of who we are. We're going to identify the folks he's addressing. This is an extremely important class because the identifying marks of a true believer, the picture of a true believer gives us security, gives us security in a time of apostasy, in a time when everybody's falling by the wayside, in a time we see so much mayhem and chaos. Guess what it does? It gives us security. When we see all around us going astray, it gives you and I, the believer, if you're a believer, we're secured in what he says about us in these verses. Jude is writing to all believers. I said this last week. If you fall under this powerful description of what he says in verses 1 and 2, amen, that Jude, amen, not just speaking to a local assembly, but he's talking to the universal church. He's talking to the celestial church, amen. He gives for the believer, watch this, what we need, no matter what happens in the world or what we may experience, watch this, I want you to watch this, get this, you and I are kept by God. God keeps us. We're preserved by, I want you to get that. You and I are preserved by God. No matter what's happening, we are kept by God. Amen. You don't need to fear the decline of faith. You worrying about who ain't doing what? No, you need to focus on what God got for you. Amen. And, and the rebellion, there's a lot of rebellion. People don't want to fall into no type of authority and craziness. You don't need to fear that. You don't need to fear the falling away, as we're going to see a lot of falling away. Amen. All the false teachers, all the false teachers. Amen. As we look at this, matter of fact, 
He closes with security. He begins in verse 2. Walk with me, Bible students. He begins in verse 1 and 2 by giving us security. But he closes the book of Jude in verses 24 and 25 by locking us in with security. Look what he says in Jude verses 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from fall and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy. He tells us that because, watch this, as we're going to learn, if you're truly a believer and you fall under this description, watch this, you can't fall away. You can't be cast out. Watch this. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Amen. I use this a lot in the benediction when we close out church service. Amen. Because I want you to walk out church service with the benediction that God has you in his hands. That no matter what, no matter what happens that week, God got you. No matter what you experience, no matter what happens in the world, God got you. Amen. And so as we look at this, he gives us security. Amen. He begins with security for the believer and he closes the letter with security for the believer. Now listen, Jude gives us, and this is the good stuff, we're going to get some good stuff, amen. I, if we was in church, I'd say, tell your neighbor, we're going to get some good stuff. We're going to get some good stuff. Jude gives us four great truths that give security to the Christian, the child of God, true believers, amen. He shows us something. Now I want you to grab this awesome truth, amen. Four great truths he gives us. He tells us this, he says, watch this, he says, we are called, we are beloved, in the King James, I like that, beloved, we are kept, and we are blessed. Mm. You better write that down somewhere. I think it's on your outline. You need your outline because you're going to need this. You're going to need this. He says, for the true believer, you're called, you are beloved by God, loved by God, beloved, you are kept by him, amen, amen. You're kept, but you're also blessed. Amen? Amen? And that's where our shout comes in. If you ever want something to shout about, you shout about the fact that you've been called. You shout about the fact that you've been loved. Everybody wants to shout because you got a new car or you got a new house. That's good. That's mature. That stuff ain't going ain't going to be with you forever. Amen? The clothes and the, and, the, and the Gucci bags and all that's good stuff. Thank the Lord for that. But that stuff ain't going to be with you forever. But what will be with you forever, you've been called, you are beloved, you are kept, and you are blessed. Amen. And so as we look at this, that's where the shout comes in. Let's take our time this evening. And because I don't want to give you too much because this is very didactic. This is this is this is grown up spiritual truth. This is a uh, steak. This is filet mignon. Amen. With potatoes. Amen. And some corn on the cob. Amen. And some and some cobbler afterwards or uh, a cheesecake afterwards. Amen. That's all this tonight, amen, that you're going to get. Now, buckle in, let's grow. Watch this. The first thing that I want to, let's break down just one of these great truths tonight. And that great truth is you have been called. Look what he says. He says in the text, Jude says, he says, to, to those who have been called. What does that mean? To them that are called, amen. To them that are called. Watch this. Let's look at this. Uh, uh, listen. A Christian is somebody who is called. A child of God is somebody who is called, amen? And that's the first security for the believer, that, that I've been called by God. I've been called by God, amen? A believer's salvation isn't uh, something he or she dreams up. You don't dream up salvation. You don't conjure up salvation. It's nothing that happens because, watch this, because you decide that you cleaned yourself up. Amen. You decide that now it's time for you to get yourself together. That now, watch this, that you that you can change your life spiritually. No, no. No. Salvation is an act of God, brothers and sisters. It's an act of God. Amen. And so as we look at this, let's spend some time. Let's do, let's do an analysis of what it means to be called. Let's do an analysis of the call. Amen. Watch this what Jesus says. In Matthew 22, verse 14, listen class, let's understand something. Amen? Listen, in relationship to salvation, uh, the word called has two meanings. I want you to write this down somewhere. The word call in the text has two, it means that there is a general external call. A general external call. 
Amen? I want you to get that. Amen? And then there is a evocavius or evocavius call. Amen? Or an effectual call. Amen? It's an effectual call. Amen? And so watch this. It's an effectual uh, uh, internal call. Amen? So we're looking at two calls here. We're looking at a general call, and we're looking at an effectual call. A amen? And so watch this. An evocavious call, an evocavious call, which is an effectual call, and then we have the general eternal call. And you might not have never heard this before. But let's, let's, let's grow up, church, and watch this. You can't live off a of hype and hoop forever. You got to understand how you was called. You got to understand how you came to salvation. And we're now identifying two calls, amen? Evocavius, amen? And then we have the effectual, amen? Now watch this. Listen what Jesus says in Matthew 22, verse 14 of the hour. He said, for many are called. Look what Jesus says, many. General call, many are called. But few are chosen. Look at this. We've heard this throughout church. For many are called and few are chosen. And Jesus says this, amen? For many are called and few are chosen. Let's describe the difference between the two. There's a difference between the two calls. Amen? I want you to get this today. Because he says we are the call. The believer is the call. The general external call, the general call is the gospel message. That goes out. That's the general call. That's the general external call that goes out. It is the preaching. It's the teaching. It is the sharing of the gospel, rather given by a preacher, a pastor, a, a prophet, a faithful witness. Uh, it could be given by a mommy. It could be given by a daddy. Uh, or even Jesus himself, as we're going to see. It's the general call. It's the general external call that goes out to whosoever. It goes out. I was talking to a good friend, Pastor Bob, who just got back from um, Africa, missionary trip. Uh, he, he said he had a great trip. They was giving out the gospel. The gospel went out over in Ghana. It goes out worldwide. And so the general external call goes out. Amen. Isaiah 55, verse 6 uh, the general call, he says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Amen? Look at the general call. The prophet tells uh, all who would hear, all who would hear, you better seek God while he is right near to you. Amen? Seek him, right? Seek the God while he can be found and while he is near, right? And so we see the general external call that goes out to all of man. Amen? But then we see Ezekiel. Let me look at Ezekiel 33, verse 11, so we can understand this call thing. Amen? Uh, we can understand it. He says, say to them, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, take no pleasure in the, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He said, I don't take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn from your evil ways, and they, uh, why will you die, people of Israel? We see the call goes out. God says, I want you to live the prophet. Uh, uh, of Israel tells Israel the prophet says return back to God return to God I want you to live that's a general call God is still saying the same thing in the U.S. to folks I want you to live why you got to die for I take no pleasure in the wicked dying amen but then we see uh, Jesus said over here look what Jesus says over in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28 we're still dealing with the general call here look what he says here he says come to me all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's a salvation call. Come to me, Jesus says. you weary and burdened. Watch this. In your soul, your soul, your spirit. Amen. And I will give you rest. That's the general call that Jesus sends out. Amen. He's still sending it out. Amen. But also we see Jesus, we see Jesus as he stood up in Jerusalem. He stands up in Jerusalem while the water is being poured out at the, at the Feast of Tabernacle over in the book of, of John. Jesus stands up on the last day of the feast. And look what he says here. On the last, in John 7, 37 and 38, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let everyone who is thirsty 
come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scriptures has said, then rivers of living water will flow from within them. We are looking, brothers and sisters, wake up to the general call. The general call goes out to all. Amen. The general call. Amen. The general call goes out to everyone. And we're getting out the general call. We was in the street last side of the EE team. Getting out the general call that Jesus saves. That's the general call that goes out. Amen. And so we see here that we are dealing with the first call here. The call that goes out. The general. The external call. Amen. And as we look. Watch this. But I can't forget one. I got to give you one more. I can't forget what the apostle Paul what he, what he recorded over in Romans. Let me give you that one. And Romans 10, write this down in your notes, uh, 10, 17, and 18. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Amen. The message of the gospel is the general call. Their voice has gone out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. The general call is you telling somebody in your family that the Lord so loved them that he gave. God so loved them that he gave his only begotten son. That's the general call. And so as we look at the general call, it comes by way of the gospel. Not testimonies. Not of how you was on drugs and you got off drugs. That don't, that's good stuff. That's testimony. But that don't say. What saved people is the gospel of Jesus Christ. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's what saved folks. You, you getting off of drugs and alcohol, you living a good life, that doesn't save people. It's good, amen, that God has, uh, has done that for you, but the gospel is what saves. Amen. If I was in church, I'd say, give me an amen. amen. So here we go. And so as we look at this, we see the general call. But I'm going to give you one thing that you must understand about the general external call. And that is the general external call can be rejected. You can reject it. Folks resist the general call all the time. Amen? The general external call is extended to everyone. Amen? But watch this. Jesus, let's dive into this. Jesus extends the general call to everyone, but it can be rejected. You can choose to reject the general call. That you hear it, but you don't want to believe it and allow it to germinate in your heart Amen? And you don't want to receive it. Amen? Look what Jesus says real quick over in Luke. Look what he says when he sends out the general call. Write this down. Listen to me, class. Jesus replied in Luke 14, verses 16 and 19. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet, invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited. Look at Jesus. And they reject Jesus' call. Come, Jesus says. For everything is now ready. Come. Watch this. But they all alike began to make excuses. Look at this. The first said, I have just bought a field. You know, I got my little something, something going on. Got my own business. Got things happening, right? And, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I just brought five yoke of oxen. Knowing everything is materialistic here, right? And I'm on my way to try them out. I, I just bought me a new, a new Benz or whatever, uh, a Maserati, and I need to go and try it out. Amen? I ain't got time right now, but I hear you, Jesus. I hear you. Amen? Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married. You know, I got, I got, I got responsibility. My wife, my children, my family, you know how it is, right? So I can't come. Look at this. The servant came back and reported this to the master. And then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant to go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Look what Jesus does here. And, and look what it says. So what, in verse 22, he says, Sir, the servant said, what, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. He says, Israel has rejected that a Messiah has come into the world. And he says, now go to the Gentiles. Go to the Gentiles. Well, I offered it to the Jews. Now go to the Gentiles. And he says, we've done what you said with this great general external call. Amen? And there's still room. 
And then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and the, and the, and the, and the, and the country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house may be full. What are we talking about? We're talking about here the general call that goes out to all. Amen. And so as we look at this, Jesus says in, in, in John 540, he said, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. So what am I saying? Brothers and sisters, class, rooted. You can talk all day in the month of Sunday, tell them the gospel, but it can be rejected. It can be rejected. And we see that. Amen. We can see that. Amen. Uh, 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 the deacon uh, Stephen, the great evangelist, Deacon Stephen, he tells the Jewish council because they reject the truth of Jesus in the general external call. Amen. They reject it. Amen. And, and, and it goes out and they reject it over here. And he said he calls them in Acts 751. He said, you stiff necked people. Your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. Watch this. You always resist the Holy Spirit. What am I saying today? That the general call goes out, but you can reject this great gospel that Jesus is Savior of the world. And you are resisting the Holy Spirit. That's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is resisting the Holy Spirit. Resisting, rejecting the general external call of God to mankind. So here we go. Now, the general call goes to the entire world. And people can reject it or accept it. There's only two responses. Amen. There's only two responses. Amen. And, and the one of two responses in 2 Corinthians 2.16, to the one we are, to one that receives the general call, watch this. When you give out the good news that Jesus is Savior, he loved them, he died for them, you can have eternal life. The, the one response, the one is an aroma, there's an aroma to one that rejects that, is that it brings death. There's an aroma of death. They don't want to hear that. Amen. And but to the other, it's an aroma that brings life. We got two aromas. We got one that rejects and we got one that receives. One that rejects life, one that receives life. Amen. And who's equal to such a task? So as we see that it brings a fragrance of death unto death or a fragrance of life unto life. But then we go into this next call. Watch this. But those who receive the general external call, let's say, uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. Now watch this. Grab this. Listen to this. Then that is given into the second call. Once you receive that first call of the gospel, that now, watch this, goes into the second call. Amen. And that is the effectual efficacious call amen the internal call this is some powerful stuff amen class watch this it's it's the call now that hits your soul it's the call now because you responded to the general call it's the call now that that redeems your soul that finds its way in and now god moves by his spirit into the life of the person amen and brings about salvation did you walk with me? We went from the general call down to the effectual call because once you respond to the general call, it now makes its way for the effectual call to hit your heart. And when the effectual call hits you, amen, it now brings you salvation by way of the Holy Spirit. You better walk with me today. We're talking about call folks. This is true salvation. Look what he says here. Look, understand this. The, 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 this call, watch this in 2 Thessalonians 2.13. And this, this whole Evacavius call, amen? Or Evacavius call. And, uh, I like to call it the uh, factual call, amen? Get tongue-tied there. But in 2 Thessalonians 2.13 and 14, we, uh, he says, but we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, Loved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the what? Through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. Amen. And through the belief in truth. You believe truth, and now watch this. God allowed the Spirit to move in your heart. He's moving in your heart. He called you to this through our gospel. 
Amen. The gospel saves you. Amen. That you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? Watch this. To make this simplify. God moves by his spirit into the life of a person. Brings about salvation. I want you to get that. God is the source of the call. The Holy Spirit is the channel through which the call comes. Let me say that again. God the Father is the source of the call. Of the call. God the Holy Spirit is the channel through which the call comes. That's what he says here in 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 and 14. Look what he says over here in, in Romans 1 about this call. He says this, to all in Rome who are loved by God in Romans 1, 7, uh, he called. He said you're loved by God and everybody loved by God are called by God. You're called, amen, to be his holy people. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch what he says about the call. The call, folks, are God's holy people. Amen. Because you responded to the general in, uh, external call that now turned into the effectual, evocavious call or evocacious call. Amen. That now has impacted your life, your soul, and your spirit that now has now redeemed you. Amen. Look what he says in Rome in Hebrews 3 1. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling. This effectual call is also called a heavenly calling. Amen. It's a divine calling. Amen. And he says, You share in the heavenly calling for those who are called. He says, Now you fix your thoughts on Jesus. Since you've been called, since the Lord has redeemed you, believer, now you fix your thought on Jesus. When, when, whom we acknowledge as, as our apostle and high priest. Did you see that? So now the call, as we look at this, keto us, keto us, amen? The call are those who have responded to the gospel, the general call. God, watch this, summoned them, called them. They believe and they respond. Watch this. Jesus says this, and this is not on the screen. Write it down. Jesus says this in John 6, 37. All that the Father gives me. Watch this. Listen to, watch the gospel. All that the Father gives me will come to me. John 6, 37. All that the Father gives me. The Father is the source of the call. The Holy Spirit is the conduit. Amen. That carries the call. Amen. All that the Father gives to me will come to me. And he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. That's powerful. We teach in Bible today. So we look at the general call that goes out to everybody. But now the response will determine is that is that general external call, is that also an effectual call? Because the effectual call only comes off the response of the general call. Now watch this. Both calls work together sovereignly by God. Both calls work sovereignly together by God. Amen. Those that respond to the general external call now has this eternal um, effectual call. Amen. Holy call, divine call. Watch this. Operating in their hearts. These are the folks, the ones Peter identifies in 1 Peter 1.15. He calls them holy. The ones that have the effectual, evocavious call in their heart, watch this, evocavious call in their heart, watch this. They are the ones that are called holy. Amen? They have been chosen by God, set apart, grabbed this, with this internal, effectual, responding call. And not only that, when you have this call in your life, you recognize this. Those, they recognize and discover who Christ really is. Everybody that has the effectual call, watch this, because we're going to be talking about apostates, those who fall away. See, when you got the effectual call in your life, watch this, hold on to your seats. You can't fall away. You can't fall away. You can't say, well, now I don't want Jesus no more. No, you can't because of the effectual call that is now in your life that keeps you. Not only does it keep you, it preserves you. 
You can bump your head all of a sudden and say, I, I don't want Jesus. Just, the grace of God is so good that the effectual call doesn't change. It keeps you. Amen. And so as we look at this, watch this. We also discover something. Those who have the effectual call. I ain't talking about you playing church. I'm talking about the effectual calls in you. First Corinthians uh, 1 verses 23 and, and 24 tells us something. It says, but we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews, foolishness to Gentiles because they don't believe. They don't, they reject it, right? But to those whom God has called, to those who responded to the general external call that now has become an effectual call, amen, to those both Jews and Greeks, guess what you discover? You discover that Christ has, is the power of God. You know that Christ is the power of God. Nobody got to tell you. Nobody got to jumpstart you. You know that Christ is the power of God. And you also know who he is, that he's the wisdom of God. You know that Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords. No matter if heaven and earth pass away, you know who the redeemer is. That comes from the effectual call. Mm, mm, mm. I get excited teaching this, amen, because this is real Bible. And watch this. And so watch this as we look at this. And understand this. Watch this. Don't want to lose you here because we're teaching something here. There's always a human response. Watch this, Rooted Bible, so we won't get caught up in falsehood, uh, uh, false teachers and false believers and false people. Those who have the effectual call always respond to Jesus the right way. Let me tell you that. All this foolishness we got, uh, 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 craziness and, and all. No, no. When you got the effectual call, you always respond to Jesus the right way. Amen. You respond in faithfulness. You respond in thankfulness. You respond in worship. You respond in a desire to live for him. You desire, you, 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 you respond with hope. You respond with an attitude to serve. Let's get away from this foolishness, amen. That's why Jude is talking about the apostasy, the falling away, amen. Check out the folks who were Jesus when he comes. When Jesus comes back, and all the armies, this is Bible, converge on him down in the, in, in the plains of, of Megiddo. At Armageddon, when all the kings of the world come up against him, amen? All the kings. And when the beast, when the Antichrist, along with all the kings, come up against Jesus as he's coming back to set up his reign on the earth. That's Bible. Guess who's with him? Look at the folks. Look at, look at Revelation 17, verse 14. And they will wage war against the lamb, but the lamb will triumph over them because he is Lord of lords and king of kings. Now, you can get your shout on with that for a minute, but don't get your shout on yet. Look at the people who are with him. Look at me. I'm with him. Hopefully you're with him. Amen. And with him will be his called, chosen, faithful followers. Lord, have mercy. Ah, man, I tell you. This is real stuff here. And these are the folks who are with him. Huh? All this going around, talking, no, nah, no. Nah. If you uh, have the effectual call, you are faithful. Amen. You have been called. You've been chosen. You worship. You praise. You're thankful. You serve. You give. That comes with true believers. Amen. And so as we look at this, watch this. This, this efficacious call that comes uh, um, and this eternal, this effective call comes with this. Now, as we come down to the close, the key point that I want to I close with these last key points. I know I pass away get a little excited when I preach Bible like this because we need this. Church needs this. A lot of people don't even know what I'm talking about. General call, I just go to church. General call, the effective call, amen. Watch this. Uh, watch this. As we get close with this, watch this. Understand this. One thing that can't take place with this effectual, efficacious call. Amen? One thing that can't take place, you can't reject it. You can reject the general call, but you can't reject this call. You can't reject it. You can't lose it. Watch this. You can't resist it. You can't resist it. Amen? When, when we respond to the general call, the, the effective call, the holy call, uh, this evocavious call, evocavious call, hooks us, watch this, into eternity. 
it hooks us. I got hooked into eternity. Amen. You got hooked. Did you hear me? It binds us and it ties us into eternal salvation. Powerful scriptures as we come down to the close. Watch this. Powerful security scriptures so I can bring my point home with this about the two calls. Look at this. Look at this. This, this one call, it can't be rejected. But look at this. Look at this powerful verse. And you've heard it all the time. And watch this. It's a verse that in the times we're living in now, so much mayhem and chaos, the believers should have this on the refrigerator somewhere. But look what it says. And we know in Romans 8, 28 and 30, this is a powerful security because that's what Jude has given us security. He's given us security right now in the midst of all this apostasy, all that we see, we need to be anchored in Jesus, knowing that we are the beloved. Amen. We are the called. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Let me close with this, because I want to give you a little bit. Watch this. Now, we will never fully watch this class, because we got a lot of brainiacs. We got a lot of theologians trying to break down, even church folks trying to break down the mind of God. You can't do it. We, we, we can never fully understand. Listen to Pastor Webb. We can never fully understand the paradox that surrounds predestination. We can't truly, even as I'm teaching now, understanding the general call and how it, how it merges into the effectual call. You and I, with these, with these um, um, finite minds, amen, these corruptible bodies, we can't understand the predestination, how God ties it all in, amen. Only thing we got to do is believe that he does it. We just got to trust him and know that God knows the end from the beginning. God does it. He knows it. Amen. And so that's all you can do is accept what God says and how he ties it all in. That's his business. I don't know about you. I'm just glad I got tied in. Amen. And so as we see this, the general um, external call, the effective uh, 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 um, internal call, how they work together off the response Amen. And how they merge together with the will of God, the predestination of God, and all how it all ties together. Amen. And, 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 and if you are a Christian, if you are born again, you're a Christian, it's, it's because of two things. If you're saved tonight, as I'm teaching this, you're a born again believer. And if you're saved tonight, it's based because of two things. One of the things is that you heard the general eternal call that God Loved you, he sent his son. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and accepted that. Amen. You heard the gospel. But secondly, you responded. And, and by responded, now the effectual, eternal call has also now meted in to your soul and, 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 and redeemed you because now the call is real. Now the call becomes alive. And now the Holy Spirit, watch this, lives in you. Amen. And so as we look at this, we look at the call. Amen. Watch this. You can't, a lot of people say, well, what if you're called and you change your mind? Well, let me, let me close with this. Amen. Uh, this is where the sovereignty of God versus the free will of man supersedes. You can't because God's call, watch this. Let me give you something, class. God's call is irresistible. Let me give you some, let me give you some theology. It's irresistible. If, 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 if you, you, when you're called by God and the effectual call is in you and has redeemed you, watch this. You can never totally abandon God. If God preordained you, to be called in eternity past, then God will also grab this someone, God will also glorify you in eternity future. You better get that. If he pulls you out of eternity past, 
marked you out in eternity past, then don't you think that he can carry you all through all the stuff in this world and this apostasy and the crazy stuff and get you into eternity future? Huh? So as we close with this, watch this. God has set you and I, the believer, the called one, apart for himself. That's the good news that Jude is telling us because he's going to get into some wild stuff we're going to look at. And we see a lot of stuff going on in the world, but you got to remember this, class. God has set you apart. He set you apart. And, and let's close with this. And this is a verse that many people have never even looked at before. God's call is irresistible, and watch this, is irrevocable. Once God saves you, he saves you. Amen. He keeps you. Amen. Look what it says in Romans 11, 29. For God's gift in his call are irrevocable. <laughs> you better take the word for what it says. Amen. Stop trying to add to it. Stop trying to think you smart, can think around it. God says, if I called you and if I saved you and if that, that general call, you responded and then that general call turned into that effectual call that it lands into your heart and it separates you unto me, guess what? It is irrevocable. It's irrevocable. Isn't that some good stuff? Amen. Watch this. Let's pick it up for next week. Uh, the redeemed soul. Watch this. Let's pick up next week. We want to go over three more great truths. I just gave you one today because that's enough for you to chew on right there. As we begin the book of Jude, we're just at the very beginning of the book of Jude. He says to those who are called, and I want to ask you tonight, are you called? Did you hear that message that the, that the Lord loved you so much that he sent his son to be your sin offering? That he died on a cross on Calvary for your sin, paid your sin debt in full. Do you believe that? That he was buried and that he rose on the third day? Do you believe that? If you believe that today, watch this. That general call has now become the effectual call. And now the Lord has moved into your heart. And you can open up your mouth and say, Jesus, oh, Lord, save me. Redeem me. Be Lord of my life. Because, watch this, I believe in my heart, and now I'm going to confess with my mouth that you are Lord, and that that's you. Watch this, you have now had the merging of two calls, amen, two calls. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, amen. On the third day, he got up with all power in his hand, and he died. He is the resurrected Savior, amen. And if you believe that, watch this, the two calls have been affected in your life. And you're a child of God. And because of that, no matter what's going on in the world, he's able to keep you. You be encouraged, Rudy. You mount up. It's time for us to run. It's time for us to get back to where we need to be and act and look like and, 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 and resemble the children of God. Amen. Put your hands on the plow and, and don't look back and let's move forward. May God bless you. If that's you tonight, you ask the Lord to save you tonight. And you heard that call. Call that number on the screen. Let somebody know that today I've accepted Christ as my personal savior, and now the Holy Spirit, he now lives in me, and I believe it because God said it. Amen. May God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. We're going to see you on Sunday. Be in church. Sunday is anniversary. Anniversary for Rooted. 24 years the Lord has blessed us, start us off. Uh, you've heard me say it. Oh, I'm going to keep saying it to the day my ministry is done um, here at Rooted. Start us off from a basement uh, and, and taking us up. Uh, and to a uh, uh, school, to storefronts, taking over a couple storefronts, and to a beautiful location, sitting on five acres, a nice edifice. We thank the Lord putting us right in the community. We thank all the souls that have been saved by where this ministry lies, disciples. We thank the Lord. Come out and celebrate with us this Sunday. Uh, we got a great pastor preaching. Um, on Sunday, we're going to have a cookout afterwards. We're going to eat some hamburgers and, and some hot dogs. And you know, church ain't church without no yard bird. You know, we're going to have some of that chicken. We're going to meet together for between 12 and 2. Just come together after this post-pandemic and have a great time. We ask all the Rooted members and any guests to come on out. And we're going to get in. We're going to get out. But we're going to have a great time. We're going to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. May the Lord bless you. And may heaven richly smile upon you. Be blessed.